Welcome back to the channel and today we have a really quick and simple tutorial and that is how to use Blender's ambient occlusion node. Now you can see here I have this fire hydrant model and I'll quickly show you what a difference this node makes before we get into the tutorial. So I'm going to quickly go into my shading and let's just say we had just this red paint material here by itself. All right, you can see this is the result. All right. And you know, it's kind of cool, but it just feels flat. It doesn't feel like it's in a lived in world. But as soon as we use the ambient occlusion node and mix in a dark material in the included, occluded areas, you can see here, look at that. Look at the difference. It just makes it feel more grounded, more earthy. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna show you how simple this is. Now you can do this with any object, okay? Especially if it has a lot of little folds and nooks and stuff it's going to work fantastic so let's just say okay you have just a simple material in this case i have this principled and i'm going to go ahead and detach all of this stuff right so i'm going to do this from scratch so we can follow along so let's just say you have um in fact i'll, I'll disconnect this as well we'll just start completely from scratch let's just say you have a principal shader right a principal bstf and in this case in my fire hydrant i'm just going to make that red bring down the roughness a little bit all right, so here we just have a simple red material, right? So what we're gonna do, shift a search and type in mix shader, grab it and then place it on here. You wanna make sure that whatever your main color or shader is, it goes into the bottom shader. And then what we'll do, we'll go shift a search and get another principled. And for now, let's just make this principled a brown color and by bringing the value down like this. And let's just drag that into the top shader. So now these two are mixing kind of like 50-50 here of the factor and I can drag back and forth. But for this really to be cool, we are gonna use our little magic node now. So let's go ahead and let's go shift A, search and get the ambient occlusion. So let's type in ambient. Let's grab the ambient occlusion node. And now what we can do is we can take this color and plug it into the factor of the mix shader. Now out of the box, it's not gonna be very evident. So what we'll do is we'll go shift A, search and type in ramp get a color ramp and then place it on this cable. And now we can drag these values closer to each other. So now you can see all of a sudden, have a look at that. If I come close here, see that? If I drag this black value up and I can drag this white value down to kind of tighten that as well. And there we have it. Look at that result there. You can always come here and mess around with it all you want. Another really cool thing to do is to actually take the distance here and change that around. So if I make it 0.5, you can see this is what we get. If I make it 0.1, this is what we get. So it just kind of looks at the distance between the occluded areas. So if I make it two, you can see we have a lot more influence. If I make it 12, you know, you can see kind of like what's happening here. So you can mess around with this value. You can make it inside like so, or you can make it only local. And you can kind of try around with those and see what um, differences they make. You can also mess around with the samples. I find something like 22 gives a really good result, but you kind of see here how simple that is. So even with just two really sort of kind of crappy basic um, shaders, we haven't done anything fancy. We already have quite a cool looking result here. And here with my previous example, I just added a little bit of noise and roughness to the red paint, which it's just fantastic. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. Um, go ahead, try it out. Use the ambient occlusion node that comes with Blender. It's a ton of fun and you're really gonna like what you get. 